Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on asthma in pregnancy. Bronchial asthma is one of the most common pulmonary disorders complicating pregnancy and the effect of pregnancy on the severity of asthma and the effect of asthma on the pregnancy are uncertain. However, it had been observed that women with well-controlled pre-pregnancy asthma tend to tolerate the pregnancy well. And around 3 to 12% of pregnant women are affected by asthma. So in general, pregnancy is associated with worsening of symptoms of the asthma in one third of the woman, whereas another one third of the woman, there is improvement of the symptoms shown by studies. For antenatal assessment before the delivery, all the women who had bronchial asthma should be booked for delivery in a hospital. And the doctor should take a detailed clinical history, including the following information. We should ask how frequent are her asthma attacks, how long is the interval between the attacks, is she taking any medications, what are the types and the regularity, the dosage, when was her last asthma attack, and what was the trigger factors. And we should specifically inquire whether it is exercise-induced asthma. These are some of the features of severe life-threatening asthma that we should look out for. So if the peak expiratory flow rate is less than 35% of predicted, PO2 is less than 8 and PCO2 more than 4.6 kPa, silent chest, cyanosis, bradycardia or arrhythmia, hypotension, exhaustion and also confusion. So those women who have chronic asthma, they should be reviewed by a physician in the clinic for assessment of the respiratory system, which include assessing their respiratory rate, any cyanosis, and also assess the peak expiratory flow rate, and also check their response to the drug treatment to decide whether to continue the medication or to optimize the medication dosage. An obstetric plan should be drawn by an ONG specialist in the clinic and serial ultrasound scans can be used to assess the fetal growth to detect any intrauterine growth restriction, which can be a complication is asthma mothers. <coughs> For the management in labor, first reassess the status of the respiratory system. If there is presence of bronchitis, it should be treated with antibiotics. If there is bronchospasm, it should be treated with bronchodilators. And first, we can give sobutamol. If there is inadequate response, then we can switch to intravenous hydrocortisone. Monitor the label in the usual way and continue the anti-asthmatic medications. Make sure the mother is well hydrated and well oxygenated. Pulse oximeter monitoring every hour and provide adequate analgesia. We can also administer intravenous hydrocortisone if the woman is on corticosteroids or is having an acute exacerbation of asthma. CTG monitoring of the fetus to monitor the well-being of the fetus. If there is postpartum hemorrhage, we should use oxytocin. And oxytocin can be used for induction or augmentation of labor. Take note to avoid carboprost and NSAIDs. And also avoid antenatal use of aspirin as well. So for postpartum, we can encourage breastfeeding among the asthmatic mothers. Anti-asthmatic drugs are minimally excreted in breast milk and they may continue the medication while breastfeeding because it's safe. Also remember to avoid NSAIDs. So that's all for this video. Thank you.